that we have. After I've seen the first one, it's like no other one compares. <laughs> it is 6.30, Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States. All right, good evening. <clears throat> Is there anyone here for public input? <clears throat> anyone here for public input? No? All right, review and approve council agenda. Um, Mr. Mayor, I did have an opportunity to add it to the agenda, but just for point of reference, um, consent agenda item. F, request advertisement for bids on 2022 street projects was just added at the last, just asking to be, um, for the ability to do the advertisement. Move to approve as amended. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Nope. <coughs> Oop. Four to one. All right, consent agenda items. Item A, approve one to four day temporary liquor license and fee waiver for Way Park Family Fun Fest. Item B, approve special animal license request. Item C, approve public work seasonal hires. Item D, approve landscape coordinator contract. Item E, approve resolution supporting LGA formula update. And item F, request advertisement for bids on 2022 street projects. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four to one. All right, regular agenda. Consider resolutions and MOUs for summer scheduling. Oh, hold on, <coughs> one moment. I, I realized that was my item. <clears throat> um, what you have before you, uh, members of the council, um, is, I'm trying to find my staff report. Um, and something that we've had some discussions um, for the last couple of months and then also had a conversation with our council in a work session as well um, is a proposal that has come from our staff um, to look at the possibilities of going uh, putting some summer hours together um, the three departments that would be impacted by this would be um, public works, um, police administration, and then our administrative staff here um, at City Hall. Um, what the request is just to have some flexibility with the scheduling, um, allowing the ability to work um, for those that want to work four 10-hour shifts instead of the five eight-hour shifts during the summer months. Um, as far as our office hours, uh, nothing would change on that behalf. Our hours would remain open the same. Um, so it would just give some of our staff that flexibility um, we've had the opportunity to work within each of our departments to kind of figure out exactly how that might work out. Um, and we've been able to um, come up with a scheduling that allows them to have the coverage that they need while also being able to, um, to be able to allow for those adjustments. Um, ideally, what would happen is the staff would, um, between police admin and, this, and administration, would choose which work schedule they want, whether they want to work the four tens um, or the five eights, and then that's what they would stick with. If for whatever reason they the four tens weren't working, we'd allow them to go back to the eights, but we wouldn't let them flip, flop back and forth. Um, in public works, just because of the way that the staffing is set up with their work rotations, what we would have would be to have the um, all of the staff working on four tens and then the on-call person would be working the five eights. Um, in order to achieve this, um, what we needed to do was to put together um, MOUs um, for the police administration, um, which is represented by LELS, and then public works um, is represented by Teamsters. So there um, in your packets are the attached um, MOUs along with resolutions, because we do those by resolutions. Um, that would need to be done. As far as the administrative staff is concerned, um, there is no need because it isn't changing any of our um, city personnel policies like I had originally thought um, it was, and so there was no requirements or changes that needed to be made um, with that. We don't list out the number of 
hours that those individuals work, so there's no need to make any changes. So if the council um, is wanting to consider these items, the items before you would include um, the resolution and uh, memorandum of understanding for the non-licensed essential bargaining unit, which is our police administration, and then consider the resolution and memorandum of understanding for the maintenance worker bargaining unit, uh, which is Teamsters number uh, 320. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Those should be probably two separate items. All right, council, questions, comments? Uh, I do. Um, on this, I know we talked about it before. However, with this coming through, I don't know how we can pass it if we don't know what their work schedules are going to be. Um, I think if you're going to pass this, we should know um, what type of work schedule it's going to be, uh, how uh, much time we're going to lose during the summer for working days, um, and if we're going to have the proper coverage in each of these departments. So um, until we get that schedule that shows us this, I don't think we should go with it until we have fully went through the whole thing so that we know that <clears throat> our maintenance department will have enough coverage and uh, according to what we talked about, we would lose one day a week with that department and they already say they don't have enough time to get things done. Our um, administration here, are we gonna have enough people for coverage on Monday and Friday is from what I understood was going to be the days off. Um, so until we get that kind of schedule and show me that we have coverage enough for our citizens and people, uh, I don't think we should pass it at this time. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Mr. Linquist, as far as public works, the public works employees, including their two public works supervisors, if, if the second one is approved this evening, would be Monday through Friday, um, and they would work from, Bill, what were your hours? I'll take it. Okay. <coughs> so talking about supervisors, I'm talking about. Today. I'm talking about the employees and the supervisors. The maintenance workers and utility operators will work Monday through Friday, or Monday through Thursday from 6.30 to 4.30. The on-call person that's slated for that week to be on call will be working Monday through Friday, normal hours, 7.30 to 3.30. I'm saying now you lost a whole day a week. And no, I didn't. And you complain constantly that you don't have enough people to do the work, and now you got one more per, or one more day of They're work. still getting 40 hours of work. We didn't, we didn't lose any in. time, Mike. You gained mm -hmm. two hours a day for four days. Yeah, I know how that works. Well, then you didn't do it right when you were working, to be real honest with you, because... <laughs> I'm not going to argue, but we'll, I can tell you what happened. Well, then, then we'll get rid of it, but I, I, I think it's a good morale booster for them. I think it's a good way to keep people here, and I, and, and I don't see how we're going to lose anything, because if we have extra work, it's no different than if, there, if something gets happened on a Saturday, we just call them in, so... We always have. But. Well, we will. I mean, so... As far as the police administration, because that's really the only other item that needs to be um, approved by council um, for consideration. Those schedules have been worked out with their departments. Um, I think they have their staff coming in from and working the same from, a, um, some are coming in, Dave, what time is it, 6.30 to 4.30, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. And then that would be from Monday through Friday, and they always have two people that are always working. So there's that's the number of people that are needed to cover the front. So that's something that, um, as department heads and myself, we have worked through to make sure that we are that we have that coverage that are needed. Um, and then we still do have, I believe, one individual in your office that still wants to remain, or two. You've got your full-time CSO and your community service or outreach specialists that are both going to be working eights, correct? We've always tried, um, council, um, <clears throat> we've always tried to maintain uh, at least two people in the front window in the PD Monday through Friday. And um, with the staff we've added, and uh, this, we are still able to achieve that with the, the uh, 10 hour schedule. So I, I, I wouldn't have supported it yeah. if we couldn't have maintained that level of service. 
And that is also the same in um, administration as well. I'm just asking, when these things come out, we get half the information most of the time. We have talked about this at the work session. We had our staff did, come together and brought that together. And Yes, we passed. did talk about it, but at the same time when you come out, there should be a schedule that shows us why we're going to support the MOA. So, and I don't feel there's enough information that came out that showed us what the work schedules and what the type of people being covered are. So, Council, any other comments? Yeah, I just have one. I have one question. Um, <clears throat> has consideration been given to splitting the staff to work Monday, Thursday, and Tuesday, and, thir and Tuesday, Friday? We have that right now. Is that what, yeah. is that what the plan is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be off. Yeah, we'll always have. That's how we accomplish that. We'd have two people that would be off and two people that would be working. Yeah. I'm not claiming this won't have its wrinkles, but it's a very short time frame to try it and see how it goes. Um, yeah, so I'll move to approve. You want the resolutions first? Um, you can do them both. Just do them as, as long as you want to cover them in both. That's fine. You'd have two oh. resolutions for that. Right there. There it is. I have it up on the screen. Sorry, I, t I was looking for something else on that you could, I think you, so, could, um, you could move... Resolution one and resolution two. Yeah. Okay, I'll move to resolution one and resolution two. Uh, number one and number two. Number two and number three. Well, I meant the numbers here. I yeah, she's not referring oh. to your numbers. Oh, you yeah. mean on yeah. resolution yeah. Oh. number? No, 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 no. Well, no, back no. in the day, we did reference resolution yeah, numbers right. quite a bit. Item one and item we two. We add the resolution numbers, yeah. Item number one and item with item number one with the resolution and item number two with the resolution. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Four to one. All right, item B, part-time CSO position. Who's got it? Got mic. Oh, you want me to go at that one? The council did hold um, interviews this afternoon. Uh, we had three finalists for our part-time CSO position, um, and I believe um, they have a recommendation uh, to <coughs> bring forward one to a point. At this time, I'd like to recommend the hiring of Anthony Nahava, A grade three, step one, effective. Whenever they can make contact and make agreement, those start time. Uh, count, yeah, um, Councilman Lindquist, um, just to be clear, it is a uh, conditional offer. Yeah. You're approving a conditional offer of hire. Um, we've got to complete a few background Unchecked. steps. But, oh, okay, uh, I didn't know yeah. that. It's listed up here on the screen if you want to look at that. But he, but he is the finalist candidate that we're yep. looking okay. at. Okay, with the conditions. To follow. Correct. Are we keeping the others on eligibility? Um, yep. the The recommendation would be to also include a, a, include approving the eligibility list to ex, um, set to expire twelve thirty one twenty twenty two. There you go. Add that to the. Add that to the motion. I'll second. Further discussion. <coughs> All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. <coughs> Passed unanimously. Item C: Public Works Supervisor position. I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Dean Pop uh, to Public Works Supervisor position effective May 24th at pay grade nine, step one, eligibility list to be remain effective until 1231-22. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Item D, LED video screens for the ledge. So many questions. I know, and I... I, I think this is something we should have talked about at a work session. If, I wish I would have had the time to do that. I will give you that right now. This is from um, Chris Fritz and receiving information late, and I will, the reason why we have it on the agenda versus having it on a work session. You wanna, do you want to go through some of it? Sorry about that. 
Yeah, we Chris received two different quotes, uh, one from this company, um, <clears throat> Visual FX, and then he reached out to our Ray Ohms out of St. Augusta just to do a comparable close by. Um, visual bloom out of the water, it, roughly about $86,000 for two screens versus $150,000. So uh, just to know, put up for discussion, the money would come from the $100,000 from the Falcon Bank donation. So um, the size of the screens were, it's a little bit larger with the visual one that's 14 by eight, so there's two of them. So there's, on each side of the stage, there'll be a 14 by eight screen on each side. Um, they're compartmentalized is the way I understand it. And yeah, they're made in about frames and they clip together. Yeah, they, they clip together, yeah. I could have attached the spread spec sheet, but I didn't. Um, and eventually you can put them all together and do something, you know, one with a bigger screen if we wanted to do something on the stage. But for right now, if we can, when we get them, if we goes forward, I think he's looking at late July. So it would probably be up for maybe half of the season or towards the end of it. And we're going to wait and see how once we get them here and how they're played and put them together, so. That's where all my questions <clears throat> revolve around. What kind Go. of frame, how is it attached? Does it come down and fall? Correct. Do we cover it and fall instead of taking it down? I mean, this list goes on. Okay, so the way I understand it, th this quote includes the chain hoist that we need to have up there to support it so that it hangs from that. And then there's gotta be a certain amount of electrical. They will come down in the winter. They keep coming these cases. Yep, it's all in cases. So that'll, the cases will be put away, and then in the spring, then when we're back out there again, we'll hang it all back up. But there's, <coughs> he had it all laid out in his quote, what the chain hoist, the electrical, and all that stuff, the setup. So it's about as much as I can tell you. I mean, I have the same questions, Frank, but. Uh, oh, yeah, and who's reading? Can it be affected by it's water, crazy. rain? Um, Apparently, I, I assume so, Vic. I mean, I'm. What who, type of wind can it take? I, I'm assuming that you we're going to have to secure it to the wall on the bottom. You, know, you would typically bolts, put sandbags on the bottom corners so it can't pivot and it's away from the building so it can't bang it. I mean, so. can it take a 70 mile an hour wind, 80, 100? These are, the, these are what they're made for these things and this is what right, he has. Yeah. This is actually better than what he has in his facility is what we've been told. Yes. He's envious of Well, so, uh, you know, the technology changes so quick. I, that I, oh, I, absolutely. Right. Um, he's pretty happy yeah. about the quote that he got. That's all I'm going to tell you. And we're saving a lot of money because they wanted to send it to him and then then to us. Well, that would have cost thousands of dollars more in shipping. And so they're coming directly to us if the council approves this. Who's responsible for putting them up? <laughs> they will be help. They will do the first setup, and then they'll figure it out from there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, Frank. So many problems. <laughs> Who's visual With, FX? Well, the wiring too. I mean, I got to figure out what kind of power you need there and all that. It sounds like the wiring is simple. I mean, taking a disassembling that, yeah. storing it properly, and who is responsible for all this? Well, guess who? I think you're talking to them. Yeah. Well, we are after. We I mean, buy it, no doubt about it. Because yeah. they're ours. Right? Yeah, they're ours. So no different than anything else. And trust me, there'll be a lot of training. But our chairs are also ours, and they're the ones That's that set I mean. it up. It's no so than anything so else we can have we them buy. help do put some of that because they know, do that. Do we know how much it weighs? You know, I don't. Fully know. assembled one of these. <laughs> I could probably. I didn't bring the spreadsheet or spec sheet. I, I find myself hesitant. One hundred less than a thousand. I find myself hesitant, not having a lot of questions that need to be answered. I could look up the weight here if you just give me a minute they get answered before they go up. Who is Visual X FX? I think it's out of LA or someplace. Where? It's a company that um, Chris had found. They, they're very difficult to be able to find right now. And that was the reason, that's part of the reason why. And so he's been doing a lot of homework on this on our behalf. The challenge with that has been is, is that we just got the, the information and so and then it's like we need it now. So this is the only reason why we put it right on the agenda for you guys to you consider. Know, I asked I about that. this when this was being built. Where are the video screens for the sides? And we, we, waited we for don't need them. We don't need them. Well, 
that wasn't what we said. No. Well, yeah. We said we didn't have the money for them. Now we do. We have $100,000 from Silicon I'd Bank. It, we, we didn't really discuss what we were going to use the $100,000 oh. on either, so no, that's missing not. from the discussion. Oh, but anyway. But at least no, we that enough. was just my recommendation. I do have some of the specs that I just pulled up. I can pull up here. here I, like I'm looking look at you, Sean. I'll look for it. So. And with all the other monies we're spending out there, is that money still available? Yeah. Yep. We haven't spent because, that money. Well, I see things being ordered and done. Mm -hmm. Now I look through the bills and I see there must be signs being changed out there I'm not aware of. And it all adds up. If you're, if there's any ch signs, it's they're the smaller. I think the signs, are for, signs. maybe for uh, how to get the parking lots. Yeah. Well, I was waiting to go traffic. into the bills for this, but yeah, no, yeah. How to get, yeah. how to it's it. it's for the traffic plan, so. which um, will save us money in the long run because we want to keep putting them up and you, down. Bill, I I got it here, but I don't see. A, um, yeah. wait, a uh, case. Wait, it says flight case of 242 pounds, but I don't know what a flight case is. It's a roadie box that you put your equipment in. Unless, unless they're saying one, each case is... Uh, um, <coughs> it's the cabinet, yeah. Does this include, did you say the hoist, of, hoist mm -hmm. them up there? Yeah. 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 It's, is that a mechanical hoist, I would assume? Um, I believe, I think it was a chain Since hoist. Since it's kind of, yeah, it's a chain hoist, but there's power chain hoist or I, mechanical know. chain hoist. This and something is, that's gonna hang there for months. I got maybe the a mechanical chain at the last minute, so it's. I quite honestly thought when we started the season, we weren't gonna have any nope. up for the season. Mor motor, it's, it's motorized. Four of them, two on each side. Well, that would help them from swaying. Um, but again, I can't discern right now what a f what each screen. It says here 17 pounds, but I don't know. That says the cabinet. And then it, and the only other way they got is 242. It says wait for a flight case, whatever that is. So I don't know how many are in there. Or well, it takes a lot of cases to make a screen I, that size. I'm, I'm assuming so, right. Did anybody ever see one being assembled? No. They have that experience. New West also has their own video display that they actually quote, were one of them that quoted, was quoted, but they couldn't get them for that price. <coughs> so they have the experience of taking these up and down. So exactly, is, they do. We do not, nor well, right, we have but staff. Those are yeah. our partners. Those are the ones that are going, they're the ones that are utilizing that, that screen. They're the ones that are benefiting from that. Right. So they're the ones that can help bring it up and bring it down, is what I'm getting at. What's your wishes, Council? Carla, can we take that money out of that or is that 100,000 designated to something else? It's a vague, it, I'm sure. As long as it was being used for capital, which was in, included in part of our overall budget for the amp, for the ledge, we have that ability to use that, yes. Well, when I came to the meeting, I was kind of not really wanting to go along with this because I, it's very short notice. We, at least for my part, yeah, and having an understanding of some of this that it's kind of a wham, bam, let's get it up there. And it's like, I don't my, know. My I'm taking it on a whim that he has found a decent piece of equipment that's going to last. Man, well, I'm I guess going without to doing I'm any research. This forward so, far so we can have a discussion no after motions on the table. So I'm going to make the motion that um, we approve the purchase of LEDD. Uh, video screens from the ledge from Visual FX for eighty five nine hundred with funding being proposed to come from the hundred thousand dollars from Falcon Bank. Eighty five thousand nine hundred. Eighty five thousand nine hundred dollars. I'll second that. Now we can have now, a discussion. Further, any further discussion after we had the first discussion, which that's fine. I don't know, you know, how is there a, a warranty period with these? Is there a, 
Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I, between the five of us up here, we don't know anything about these, but we have to assume. But you that speak the, for yourself, that, hey. <laughs> okay, is there a warranty on it? You can speak for well, me. There is a, I just there is a limited have warranty. But, you know, you have that's to not the part I'm worried about. You have about to assume warranty. that they're coming from, a, from an establishment that's well known and, you have to, and, and from a company that We've worked manages with. it for us. Right. It says this is a good company and a good price. So Okay, that's fine. What happens if something happens to one of them? Who is going to take care of it? How long does it take? What it's happens? our insurance Mike, company. That'll be the situation no matter the, what. What happens it to the chairs anything. when one breaks? It's it the same thing. Someone you breaks in there and throws You know how many pieces of stuff are out there that you could be questioning and second guessing everything on that? I, it, I get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're taking this is from a company in what, Las Vegas or something you said? No, it's out of California. I think out of California, but out of know. California. <laughs> Isn't there a, a. Couldn't we get a quote from. <laughs> We did. we did, 180, twice the month, twice well, the month. And they've been a lot higher, no. a lot higher. We buy things from out of state all the time. I mean, it, we try not to, but we do. We'd like to buy them from this country too, and we don't all the time, so. I have a motion in a second, further discussion? Yes. Um, I would like to go along with the motion to a point of getting them ordered, so they're coming but I'd like to have a lot more discussion before they're up. What if we put at our next work session, we have Chris on either a phone call or a Zoom, if we can get him on Zoom. I'm not sure how he uses that. And we can ask him those questions specifically. Yeah, and, so that and I'd like to see the frame and stuff, what they're planning to use yeah. out in them conditions. Okay. By the time we have our next meeting though, I'm gonna should be here. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna assume that he's gonna wanna place that bid before our next meeting. Well, you're wanting yes. to go along with it, just knowing you're going to go along. Uh, yeah. You just want the specs and the information. Uh, no, I, yeah, I want to have discussion about all of it. Okay. Before. So you understand. He it. will be here. Yeah. Well, Chris will be here this week. Because of staffs complaining about tasks that need to be completed, this is a task. Chris will be here. Oh, Chris will be here this weekend. Well, can we meet with him on an individual? Sure. You can individually. Sure. Yeah, you can. I'll meet trap him when I'm out there and sure. talk to him about it. Yeah. I won't be here this weekend. I won't either. So there you go. You're already down to only two people. <laughs> I don't know how many else are going. Hey, Frank, I do have Not some. I threes. do have some pictures here. I can. Uh, I can share with you. Well, yeah. It well, shows I mean, the cases and stuff, but we compi well, well compile the information so everybody can see it. You don't have to just show it to me, but. Well, are they coming in on Friday or Saturday? Should be busy or Friday. So. Can you have them call us? Um. Just go out there, find them. Yeah, just go out sure. there and find them. I'll have Friday off. Yeah, I don't know what time he's coming in. I don't know what time he's coming in. I can give you his number. How's that? Oh, uh, I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. Call the vote. Any other yeah. discussion? Yeah, send me his number. <laughs> any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Item E, preliminary and final plat, West River Business Park 4. Uh, council members, this is uh, the property of the former POS <coughs> print business property. Uh, property is being platted ahead of a potential sale and reuse of that building and in order to split the parcel and uh, get them on, get the two buildings on separate properties. Uh, we did discuss a possibility of an administrative lot split instead, but uh, the owners opted to go with the platting because you'd have to do that at some point if they expanded the, the properties or built anything new there. Uh, we'll keep it access for now for the new parcel um, with the sm smaller building along Gradle Drive. They'll have an easement through the POS building uh, property for now, uh, but the intent is they'll have an eventual access of their own off of Great Oak Drive. Both parcels are uh, um, meet the criteria for the I-1 Light Industrial District that they're in. We have not gotten any comments back from the, the county as of yet uh, because they have uh, right of, or they have frontage on County Right of Way, Third Street. But th when they get that to us, we will submit that with the with the uh, plat for eventual recording if it goes forward. The property has not been previously platted, so there is a payment in lieu of parkland dedication that would be required. Uh, staff recommended uh, a p payment amount of $9,800, and the park board concurred with that recommendation. A planning commission reviewed at their meeting and uh, recommended approval of the request as well. Uh, so I would 
uh, recommend approval of the pre preliminary plat uh, with the two conditions. Number one, development upon the property is subject to a development agreement with the city if deemed necessary. And number two, a uh, property would be subject to the uh, requirement for payment in lieu of parkland dedication uh, in the amount of $9,800. Any required parkland dedication fees um, must be paid prior to affixing of city signatures upon the plat. Uh, with those conditions being satisfied, I'd recommend approval of the, uh, the resolution uh, approving the plat as, as attached. Counselor, your wishes? So I'll move. You, you can make a motion. Go ahead. Oh. I'll move to approve the preliminary and final plat West River Business Park 4 with all conditions set forth. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Item F, preliminary and final plat, Zabinski Acres. Uh, council members, this is another uh, pretty straightforward small plat. You may recall uh, previously you approved a uh, variance to allow for the uh, establishment of a five acre parcel versus the uh, 10 acre standard parcel there. Uh, this is the, the culmination of that um, would be uh, establishing that, that parcel. Um, we, we know that the applicant is uh, working on building plans and with the intent that this would be uh, ultimately approved. Uh, Park Board recommended a required payment in lieu of Parkland dedication in the amount of $836, uh, which would be per the fee schedule for a, a one single family residential parcel. Um, we did get comments back from the county, uh, just standard comments regarding approaches and permits, nothing, nothing major. Uh, that certification uh, provided their, with their office will be recorded with the plat. Uh, Planning Commission reviewed their request at their uh, April 12th uh, meeting. Uh, and I would add that there was no concerns uh, and they recommended approval of the preliminary and final plat. Uh, I would note that as the applicant was a, a planning commission member, he did abstain from voting and discussion regarding the request as well. Um, so I would recommend uh, adoption of the, the resolution uh, approving the plat with the condition of the parkland dedication payment. Council, your wishes. I'll move to approve. I'll second. second. Further discussion? Is that Ken or Vic? Yep. Ken. Okay. Yep. yep. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. I was just trying to see who beat who to the punch. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Adam G, review of drive through Gateway Center, 10th Avenue South. Yeah, this one, uh, this is a little bit more unique. We don't see these too often, but uh, there is a, a little bit of a quirk in our ordinance that uh, you're charged with. Uh, reviewing and approving pedestrian traffic circulation plans, particularly for uh, redevelopment type acti activities like this. This is uh, the Gateway Center on 10th Avenue South. It, it's under new ownership who, who took over uh, property last year. Uh, he's been uh, working to kind of fill out that space and um, bring some new tenants in. This is the, the space, um, the northern, northwesternmost space on the southern building. Uh, this, this is a proposed for a, uh, a restaurant and they w are proposing a single drive-through window. Um, the drive-through component is pivotal for, for that particular build out uh, and the project won't move forward without it. Uh, myself and uh, Bill and, and Dave uh, Blommel met with them previously and uh, we, we acknowledge that this isn't really ideal for a, a drive-through lane given just the, the way the parking lot's laid out right now. Uh, and the configuration of it is set up with a, a single window for ordering, uh, paying, and, and taking delivery, whereas you know, a larger uh, drive-through will typically have a separate station or two for each. Um, um, just that the traffic flow in there isn't, isn't ideally set up for it, but uh, we do think it, it could potentially be workable, but um, that's uh, something that council has to review. We did discuss the uh, uh, potential for an updated striping plan for parking uh, to help alleviate concern. The applicant mentioned that their plan is to repave the, the parking lot incrementally over the next couple of years, uh, approximately one third a year, and that uh, we could update a, you know, look at an updated parking plan at that time. Uh, this uh, proposal, they also call for opening, reopening uh, the, the approach off of First Street South, which has uh, been previously 
semi-permanently closed by concrete barriers to restrict traffic upon the property. Uh, we, we really can't stop them from reopening that if, if they choose to at any time, from, from my understanding, regardless of whether this will go forward or not. Uh, we, we have advised caution just because, um, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody, you know, anyone who knows the area knows how to circumvent the, you can't take a, a right off of, off of First Street South to go 10th, but if you're sneaky, you can get around. Um, gotta be quick. Uh, but uh, it could create, you know, kind of unexpected issues. So we've, we've advised caution with, with that. Uh, the owner has also <coughs> noted interest in other restaurant type uses potentially for the remainder of the property, uh, including the Northern building and uh, perhaps even a future small standalone uh, building in the, in the future. Uh, some of which could involve potential drive throughs um, I, I think that this drive through would be potentially workable with a, a reservation that the property um, must be willing to address any traffic issues that may come up, um, can be kind of unforeseen at times, and that it could potentially limit future drive through approvals as they may come forth. That if you have too many of those sorts of uses in a too small of a space, it, it can get chaotic pretty quickly, um, particularly if a, any one of those restaurants or, or uses ends up being real popular. Um, then things can, can um, you know, the demand can outstrip the availability. But this one does have the, the stacking for about three stalls, which has kind of been our de facto minimum. So, it, it, you know, assuming it's a, a, a you know, fairly popular, but not overwhelmingly so, uh, well, not that we don't want it to be successful, but, you know, it could handle three cars lined up pretty, pretty readily. Uh, they, they have noted some uh, striping of that kind of section there to guide traffic and s some some ways to do that. So I, I do think it's workable, but I do have a little bit of reservations with that. I think I think Bill and Dave perhaps share that as well. Um, but you know, in the interest of trying to work with a, a potential new new tenant and uh, uh, look at that, I, I think it's workable. But we we put that up for discussion and, and your uh, input as well. Yeah, I'm and John, I got a quick question. Where is that drive going to be? Is it going to be on? Uh, North side of that building. Yep, on the north side. If you if you look on the general location map, it's up on the screen now. Mm -hmm. Right where that circle is in the middle. Right. It's yep. going to be in the middle of that building. <clears throat> it's it's going to be on the about the western third. Yep. If you scroll down, oh. there, there, there's the plan there that'll show the exact location. Sorry. No. no, you're fine. Oh. This shows some of the kind of the traffic movement uh, around there. See where it says what? drive through window on that building. On the northerly end of the south building, there's a notation there. Let me see if I can uh, pull it. There you go. You can see there uh, the the stacking furthest to the bottom. Uh, that would be the, the drive-through lane, and then you can see kind of the, the bypass, and uh, <coughs> there's enough room for cars to get through going in a couple different directions as long as they're you know, taking their time and not going uh, too fast. But the, the idea is that they would flow from uh, either circle around and then come back, but they would go uh, east to west and then either exit out First Street South or... Uh, perhaps back through the property. You know, as, as much as you try to guide that, you can't always predict which way people will go either. So you might, that, if it went forward, depending on how it worked <coughs> out, you know, they, they'll probably have to undertake some signage or something if something comes up that they didn't really foresee. It's hard to believe they'd go all around that whole building. Yeah, they do though. But well, my biggest concern is how you're gonna control taking a left turn off First Street South onto 10th Avenue South. They're already have signage up there. The cars are still going through there, taking a left. You have a restaurant in here. How are you going to control that? You won't. They'll come out of the parking now. lot, and they won't have to control it because it's not controlled there now. Yep. Right. If you come we'll out of that parking lot, you don't have to turn left. Right. You can turn left. That's a pain in the butt. But, <laughs> but, but there's no sign that says you can't do it. <laughs> yes. Any other comments? Council, your wishes on this. I, I, just to add, I will give the, the owner credit. He's been pretty proactive in looking at you know opportunities to bring some life back into this. Not that, not that it's bad by any means, but he's 
really trying to re reinvigorate this, and this is kind of a step he's trying to do. Isn't um, there an eating place there now? Yeah, there, there's a couple, there's a couple of in there. there. Yeah, yeah. Girl. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're pretty popular, from what I understand. I've not observed anything in there to be, you know, traffic right now to a degree that I think would be problematic if this went in. It's just um, if you have too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, too many drive-throughs, all of a sudden it, it could be, you know, a lot of turning movements and potential for uh, conflict. But but uh, we have control on that. Yeah, we do. Run, yeah. So we, you know, that's why I noted the reservation. I can I can live with this one, I think, pretty readily. But I just want to put the note in there that it, it could limit, you know in the future if they want to do those things. Not that it couldn't be done, but we would need, you know, More of a perhaps at that plan. time we would need a, a firmer idea of the striping plan and you know, that they reconfigure the parking lot to make sure you're not, you're not mm -hmm. hanging cars in the lanes or, or preventing mm -hmm. people from backing up. Counselor, your wishes. John, maybe you'll get your chicken place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not, not this one. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> is, that a, is that a motion, Frank? A motion and a second. Yes, it is now. A motion and a second. <laughs> Further discussion? Pretty strong language there. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Item H, rezoning 141 28th Avenue South, former Trout Wells property. All right, we'll continue on with my half of the agenda here. Uh, this, I'll, I'll keep this one quick. Um, the Trout Wells property, uh, was kind of a, a grandfather situation. Uh, it's long been used for in light industrial type use, but it was actually zoned B2, commercial general business district. Um, it's being purchased um, with the intent to redevelop it as a United rental facility. Um, not unlike the facility business just to the south, it fits there, it works well. It's actually a great reuse for that property. Um, but the I did work with the owner, and I said we could, you know, we would live with moving that in because it's a very similar use. They didn't need to rezone it if they didn't want to. Um, it doesn't pose an issue for us, but uh, they are more comfortable, you know, uh, having it be rezoned to a, a, a light industrial type use. So what it actually fit really well as is the uh, the I three. Remember a couple of years ago we we rezoned that stretch to I three, which is a little bit more flexible, and the. I three actually includes that um, existing rental facility just to the south. So uh, I'm very supportive of, the, of this request. Um, it's not a spot zone. There's I three immediately to the south and all, along that whole stretch. Um, really puts this property to a good reuse, and the, the owner's been very good to work with and looking at options there. We will see some uh, some fencing uh, going in there. Um, the only thing that came up from the the planning commission, they're supportive of it, but one member did have a, a question about. Uh, you know, just the, the rental equipment and uh, because a lot of it has fluids and gas and hydraulics and stuff associated with it. You know, what's their plans for uh, a spill? How do they mitigate or contain that? And they did submit some information from their corporate and they have very good plans in place to mitigate that and prevent it. So I, we're comfortable with that. So I would recommend approval of the resolution rezoning. I'll move to approve. Oh. I'll move to Second. approve the rezoning of the former trout wells. Second. Mike second it. All Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. And finally, John, vac vacation of utility easement 437th Avenue North. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to say this owner just because it's, uh, it's kind of entertaining to say Jupaca Properties. It sounds like Chew Chewbacca, and I don't know if that's <laughs> intentional or not. Uh, uh, th this is a property in transition. It's being purchased, and as part of the uh, the sale, the the due diligence found a, an unused utility easement uh, that runs right underneath the Southerly building. We've reviewed it at staff level. Um, we don't have anything in there. We've not received any comments or concerns from the utility providers. Uh, so it seems to have just gone unused. That the property is kind of crisscrossed with a few easements, but they're really only concerned with the the Southerly one. Um, that, that runs across that building. Um, so they've petitioned to vacate it. We don't have an issue uh, with the vacation and uh, would recommend uh, approving the attached resolution, but there is a public hearing co component with this, so we would have to, uh, to open that. Um, as, of thir as of the time of writing of this report last Thursday, we had not received any comments or concerns. 
Uh, still haven't. So if you, if you want to open the public hearing, uh, see if anybody wants to comment. I don't have a. I don't Do you have, have a document for that? Uh, just the in the background on the bottom, it just says that in the last paragraph that there's a public hearing um, to request um, to vacate the utility easement at 437th Avenue North. Um, this will be held at the uh, city council meeting on May 23rd. Um, Sorry, I, I may have forgotten to include the, the public hearing notice. Oh, is there anybody here that wants to speak at 715? Opened it at 715? Yep. Okay. My mistake, I apologize. No, no worries. We, we can improvise. I don't see anyone here. Did we need a motion for that? No, he can open it. I can, open, can it. open it. We just need okay. one to close it. I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I made the motion to close it. At 7.16, if it gets there. You have to wait at least a minute. We did. No. It's not 7.15 up there. 7.15, that's when it was open. There it is. There it went. I'll make a motion we close the public hearing at 7.16. I'll second. Rick or Bye. Whatever. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mo uh, motion. Passed. And I, I do not know what's in store for this building. Uh, I, I do know the uh, owner is one I've been working with previously, so he's got a little bit of a track record here, but uh, I don't know if he has anything in store for this particular property just yet. All right. Then I need a motion to approve the uh, resolution authorizing vacation of the use. Yep. <laughs> so moved. Yep. Mike and Vic. Whatever discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank that you. will do it for the regular agenda. Thanks, John. All right. I have. We got to pay the bills too. Oh, so. I have a thank you also from uh, Wakosa for our donation that we gave to Wakosa. Wakosa, and a thank you from Terebinth Refuge for the donation we gave to them. All right. Approved bills. I got questions on the bills. Okay. I'd assume the 12900 from SEH in the AMP is to do with the parking lot changes? Yep. Okay, then we got one from Custom Builders for 18569 and it references remodeling the public works building. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. I never heard of it. Oh, that's the one they were doing. Yeah. Okay. Aren't I mean? Aren't we supposed to have some discussion when it's over five thousand dollars, or at least be yes. aware of it? Yes, that should be at I anything mean, over. I mean, I read it, and this it happens all the time lately. We, so we, we just remodeled a ten million dollar building, and I don't know about it. That's just not right. So this didn't have anything to do with what I was told was moving some furniture around for temporary ticket sales. In no, time. no. Uh, this is a, there's a there was an officer Holy storage crap. space there that was revamped, and the only reason I guess the only reason I know is I was out there when they were doing it. So. Well, and this is I but, read it and that's like what the mayor council that's on you, so I will. Um, another one, um, Bim Boom Fence down at the um, quad dugout. Is that something that got damaged, or did we need to change something for Babe Ruth? No, it was it was a security issue, and some of it was bad, is what I know of it. Um, Dale was working with Bim Boom on it in Wake Park, Babe Ruth. Okay, another one. The McDowell bill for the roof on the old public works with 59330000 mm -hmm. Is that project complete, or is there more bills coming in on that? Oh. And that's actually oh. So that was less than was expected. Because, so, well, they quoted sixty-five, but that was different insulation. They had other insulation that was on site. It's a little bit subpar, but we got a price break, and we 
It's going to last the life of the building. So I took advantage of this of the savings because I think that originally came in at like seventy six thousand. I want to say sixty five. So it that. was more than that. I know so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So what you saved on the roof, you spent on remodeling. There you go. Well, <laughs> Normally I would anything, appreciate yeah. someone anything telling. Anything over 5,000, you are correct. Should come I mean, we have a million work yeah. sessions. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And if we haven't had one, we should have one for something like that. All right, anything else on the bills? I'm not done yet. I'm oh, flipping okay. through them, all my cribbage notes here. <laughs> yep, that should do it for now. Move to pay the bills. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bills get paid. That's all I got. <coughs> Anything, Sean? Oh, at the League of Minnesota Cities Conference is coming up June 22nd through the 25th. Um, just taking a step back from last week, um, last Wednesday, May 18th, we did our State of the Cities address um, at the ledge. And we will we'll have that um, whole video presentation once I receive it. We'll be putting that on our social media. So I think it went well, um, at least the comments that I got from, from people. So we're glad that we were I had to, to go it. back to work, and you guys were still up there. Still <laughs> um, so that, and I think our next council meeting that we're looking at won't be until the end of June. We're looking at the June 27th. Thank you. So there will be no need to have a meeting um, on the 6th of June at this point. Unless something comes up, I will let you guys know, and we can talk to make sure that it works out for schedules. Did you say 20? I think that's the right. What? Not the 20th, but now it got changed to the 27th. Okay. So I have the 27th if we can make that. Yep, that's next. And then I did lay out schedules um, for kind of looking forward. Yeah, that was in the... In, if you want to go and look Mail. at your department update, you can see what those dates are. I tried to lay them out for the rest of the summer <coughs> for you. So if you look at my department update, you'll see that information. All right. Council, anything else? Dave? Yes, sir. Bill? John? No, sir. Dave? Good. No. Paul? No, sir. All right. And we have one guest in the, in the, in the neighborhood today. You want to introduce yourself? <laughs> you don't learn anything there. Things I don't want to learn. Yeah, right. So, but uh, thank you for having me okay. as a guest, and I will be sticking my head in more often. And uh, I'm a servant of the community. That's why I'm here. Thank you for being here. All right, thanks. All right, then we are adjourned at 723.